Hi, my name is Coralina McKenna, and I'm a teacher specialist with the Office of Instructional Technology. Today, I'm going to be talking about grades and grade schemes in Brightspace. You may or may not know that when parents log into their side of Brightspace, they actually see a list of the assignments with the grades as they are shown in Brightspace. Now, this can be particularly challenging since Brightspace and our Power Teacher Gradebook don't communicate yet. Using grades and grade grade schemes allows you to bypass that grades feature in Brightspace so that your Power Teacher Gradebook is the rule. That is where parents need to go to find the grade. However, if they log into Brightspace, they can still find feedback on how their students are doing on assignments. So let's dive in and take a look. As you can see here, if you look in the middle of the screen, is what parents would see. So you can see the list of assignments and the grades that have been given to those assignments next to them. Now, this is fine if you're okay juggling the two grade books, but if you're not, you may not want parents to see a grade in Brightspace because it doesn't match the one in Power Teacher. But if we put grade schemes into play, then parents can see more feedback related to how their student is doing in your class or just see that they have turned in or not turned in assignments without actually seeing a number grade attached to that assignment, which forces them to go to Power Teacher to see that grade. So let's take a slightly closer look into what grade schemes are before we get into how we're going to create them. We still want the parent guardian Brightspace to communicate information to guardians. On the left hand side, you can see what grades would look like before grade schemes. These grades may or may not match what's in Power School, depending on how you are juggling the two grade books. After we put grade schemes into effect, you can see that now instead of a number grade, there's a word you are going to build the grade scheme however you need to so that it fits your needs for your classroom. Now also in the Parent Guardian Brightspace, when a parent clicks on view all grades, they are taken to a more detailed view where they can see feedback for each graded activity. So they would simply click on the feedback button and it will drop down any feedback that you have given. This works for assignments and discussions and quizzes. However, in an assignment, they will also see any standards that have been attached to the assignment, any scoring rubrics that have been attached to the assignment, and any instructions that are attached to the assignment. That is not necessarily true for discussions and quizzes, where parents are just going to see the feedback from the discussion or the quiz. On the student side, they are going to see the assignments and also their grade as it relates to this grade scheme. So again, approaching mastery, collected, reteaching required. You can still opt to show a student their score. In this case, you can see the water cycle quiz has a score of 8 out of 10. I wanted the students to be able to see that score. So you can still opt in to show grades for certain assignments or opt out to show grades for assignments. On the teacher side, you would actually see the numeric score in Brightspace for every assignment. Plus, you would see the scheme, which is the uh, verbiage there, which is, you know, approaching mastery collected, that sort of thing. And if you associated a color with those phrases, you would also see color. Let's jump over to Brightspace and see what it takes to create both grade categories and grade schemes. We're going to want to go into our grades tool. You can do that by going through course admin, or you can use the class tools and select the grades icon. Now from here, you're going to click on manage grades, click on new and category. Categories are used to cluster your grades in a meaningful way. I'm going to recommend using quarters over anything else. This will mean that students can easily see what grades were taken in just that one quarter versus individual grading groups such as homework or classwork. So I'm going to add the name of my category. I can add a shorter name if I would like to shorten it. Here is where we can get into some details about how grades are going to be viewed in the Brightspace gradebook. If you scroll down to the bottom, you will see display options. You're going to want to override display options for this item, uncheck points grade, and select grade scheme symbol. Now, in this case, the symbol is the word or phrasing that I was using that said mastery or reteaching required. If you want the grade scheme to also reflect a color, which is what the examples I showed you at the beginning had, then you're going to select grade scheme color. Once you have that done, click save and close. You would use the same process to create quarters two, three, and four. Now that we have our grade category created, let's take a look at schemes. The best way to think of a scheme is the scheme that we use every day, which is our standard grading scale of A, B, C, D, and E. Each one of those letters has a point value attached to it. 
In this case, the scheme would be the letter grade, A, B, C, D. What grade is going to show depends on the grade that the student got on the assignment. So what we're doing is telling Brightspace, when I give this student a 70, I want it to show a C. However, we can create more than just the standard grading scale. I'm going to show you what these are going to look like in the end goal, and then we'll go into how to create them. So I've already created a grade scheme called classwork. This would be a scheme that I would use when I was grading any kind of classwork that I had. In which case, I was using the symbol reteaching required, approaching mastery, achieved mastery, and exceeded mastery. Now, each one of these has an assigned value, a starting percentage and an ending percentage. So if the student got anything between a zero and a 59%, it's going to show up as reteaching required. It's not going to show up as four out of 10. I've also assigned them colors, which all of this is customizable. It just depends how you wanna use this and what it's gonna look like for your classroom. So let's head back over and take a look at how we can create your grade scheme. Click on New Scheme. You're going to want to give your scheme a name. Depending on how you're going to use these and how many you create is going to depend on how detailed you need to be with your name. For this tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and just make a very basic grading scheme of completed, not handed in, and incomplete. If I want to give it a short name or a nickname, I can do that. So my symbols are going to be what appears in place of the number grade, the numeric grade. So think of a symbol just as the A, B, C, or D. It's going to show up in place of the 4 out of 10. So here I'm going to fill in my not handed in, incomplete, and completed. Now that we have completed what the symbol will look like for the grade scheme, now we need to assign the percentage values. Your first symbol will always start at a 0%. So you need to determine when do you want it to end. In my case, my school was a no zero school. So if you didn't hand something in, you defaulted to a 50%. So in this case, if a student scores between a zero and a 50%, it's just gonna tell them that it wasn't handed in. An incomplete, I score as anything between a 51% and a 59%. They didn't actually get a grade higher than an E, so it's incomplete which leaves me with my completed being anything that goes from 60% to 100. If you need to add more lines, you'll go to number of ranges, type in the number of lines you would like to add and select add ranges. You can decide if you want to use any colors. Once you've completed all of the fields, you're going to click save and close. Now you can see that I have created a new grade scheme called complete, not handed in and incomplete. Now let's take a look at what this is going to look like when you're creating an assignment. So open a new assignment. Now that your assignment is open, you would give it a name, complete your availability dates, your submission and completion types, add any rubrics that you needed. And under the grade out of, you would give it your number of points. And here it says in grade book. You can edit or link to existing. In this case, I haven't added this to my grade book yet, so I'm gonna go ahead and add it. Here's where you can see I can choose my grade category, which would be quarter one, and then I can choose my grade type and scheme, where it is telling me I can use a numeric value, which means I'm assigning a value at a specific number of points. So I'm gonna give it a six out of 10 or seven out of 10, or I can do a select box, which means it is just going to give me the check boxes for incomplete, completed, or not handed in. I'm going to select the grade scheme that matches my assignment and click OK. Once I've done that, I'll make sure I add my due date and I can click save and close. Let's hop back over to our grade tool and take a look at what it's going to look like there. Now that I'm in my grades tool, if I go back to manage grades, I will see a list of all of my assignments in their appropriate categories. But let's say you've already created some assignments and they don't have categories. We're going to cover that real quick because you can do it after the fact. You simply click on the checkbox next to the assignment and click bulk edit. This will allow you to assign the grade scheme or change the grade scheme and select the category that you want that assignment under. So at any time, you can go back and you can change the category or the grade scheme for that assignment. Now that you've created your grade categories and grade schemes, 
Parents will now see a more general feedback about how their student is doing on assignments rather than a number grade. They're going to be forced to go back to PowerTeacher to see the actual number grade for any given assignment. Students will still see useful feedback on how they did on an assignment within Brightspace, but also be forced to go to PowerTeacher in order to see the actual number grade for that assignment. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and you can put it to use in your classroom. Till next time.